And welcome here on KM Activities, your home for the Comets as well as DC Wildcat Hockey. And we have a hockey player with us, but we're actually going to talk a lot about FCCLA. I'm Joel McCall, and we're visiting with uh, Taylor Ludvigson. She is a senior at Castle Manorville and is part of the FCCLA. And I know that she's also on the girls' hockey team because we were just talking about it. Taylor, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And thanks for taking the time to talk a little bit about FCCLA. And I know that the food drive was back in the fall. And mm -hmm. I know that was one of the big things that uh, took place in the FCCLA. But I wanted to uh, just talk about you and, and what you do at the FCCLA. Yeah, so I'm actually our chapter secretary. So I'm a part of the officer team. So I end up taking like a lot of leadership, like roles and responsibilities come to things like the food drive. Like me and Liz Fagerlin, we both kind of organize that and we're now doing that for our project that we'll like compete with. And then I also kind of just help out around as needed. Like if she needs like certain tasks done, I can go and do those for her. How are things a little different because of, especially in the fall for the food drive? Because I know that you weren't able to quite do everything that you had in the past. Yeah, for sure. We have had to do a lot of things virtually and making sure that we're like our meetings, we, especially when we were in the hybrid model, luckily we're moving to full in person soon, or I guess next week for the rest of seven through 11, we'll be able to have more meetings, but we've been having to have like two meetings instead of just like one, if we want to have one, because we don't have one for the K days and one for the M days. And then we've also just having, having like Google Meets available to join on the meeting. So we've done a lot of those things. And then like the food drive, just making things virtual and videos has helped us a lot. You're the secretary, so, uh, I mean, what is your overall duties, I guess? Yeah, so it kind of, it has been different in the past, because I was actually the secretary last year, and we had Reed Spryder as the president, so I know, like, when we'd have meetings, sometimes I'd take notes for him to, like, carry on if he needed, but this year, a lot of our positions have kind of just blended together, except for Brianna is still our president, and she does a lot of the work, too, but the rest of us kind of just work where we're needed and it's not really fulfilling like our specific positions. Do you know all of the, the officers besides, uh, okay, I know you so just mentioned Hala. Brianna, Hannah Hoff, and then Katie Harfman. These are getting into some of our state and area as well, not just chapter. So Katie Harfman, Ethan Petersley, Meyer Kaler, Maddie, Maddie Larson. Um, I know we have a few more. <laughs> I think Lizzie Johnson may be one. I know we have a few more, but I can't always remember all of them because, yeah. again, a lot of them are M days, so I haven't got to meet with them since probably the beginning of the year. Well, yeah. you, saw, uh, you mentioned uh, Lizzie, and I know she was uh, on the soccer team. Which yeah. Was, well, you got to see her there at least. And yeah. how, many years, how many years have you been in the FCCLA, and how did it kind of get started for you? Um. So I joined my sophomore year, and I kind of just – a lot of my friends were in it. It was – when we were able to like have in-person meetings and stuff, a lot more people were involved because it was, and that's the same with all other clubs right now, just because it's so hard organizing them. So a lot of my friends were in it. So when I joined and then I competed with my first event with my friends and then I just got more involved. So I was heavily involved last year and I try to be involved as much as I can this year. But again, everything's kind of just different. <laughs> yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. What about projects? I mean, you you mentioned that you have one coming up. Yeah, so we compete in these things called STAR events, which is students taking action with recognition. So it's really just like a wide variety of topics that you get to choose from. So my first one that I did, I did um, Social Reality was the title of my project, and it was under like the category Focus on Children. So I looked at, I like went over to the elementary school with my partners, and we like worked with the second and fourth graders and compared like different development levels. And last year I got to do one for teach and train. So I went over to the elementary school and shadowed a teacher and did a project on that. And now like this year, I'm doing the food drive for my project. So I'm kind of going into the details of that. And there's so many other things that you can choose from. Like, I know people that do things called like food innovations where they get to like make a food or something like that. So there's a lot of really anything that you can think of, it can fit into one of the categories. Yeah, for sure. And that's, I mean, it's unbelievable what you kids do because, again, you're in, I know you're in several different activities and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, getting focused in on one project for one group, I'm sure it's pretty probably pretty difficult. And 
with being an FCCLA, what have you learned? What have you taken away from being in this organization? I've learned so much. Um, definitely my public speaking skills have improved so much just from presenting to like the um, members of our um, chapter and then also like presenting at big events like at the national level and state level and stuff like that. And then my leadership skills, responsibility, just a wide variety of like life skills. And then I've also learned a lot about like my future because my project last year led me down the path of like education. So that's really helped like set my career goals to be a special education teacher when I'm older. So just a lot of the things we do help prepare us for our life, which is super awesome. Yeah, that's unbelievable. It's uh, such a, a great organization to be a part of with the FCCLA. Mm -hmm. And what about Mrs. Lundquist? Because, uh, you know, every everybody, yeah, you already got a smile on your face. Everybody likes Mrs. Lindquist. Yeah, she's so awesome. And she's so she's always willing to help out with something. And if you have questions, she's always there to answer them. And she's always like pushing you forward because I know um, she definitely pushed me to run for state office, but it just wasn't in it. I just knew I couldn't make it work with what I'm involved in and stuff like that. But she definitely she pushes you to reach like new limits that you don't think that you could have done. So it's she's just super awesome. Yeah, it's built you a lot of confidence. And you mentioned yeah. the state and national. Have you been able to go to some of the conventions? Um, yeah. So my first state convention was my sophomore year, and I was able to compete there. And then that summer, I got to go to California for the national convention. And then last year, I went to another fall national conference in Dallas, Texas. And then this summer, I was supposed to go to Washington, D.C. and the state conference, but both of those got canceled. And then hopefully this year, granted my project makes it, I will be able to go to Nashville because that will be a hybrid event. So it kind of just depends on who's able to go to that, but hopefully I'll be able to make it there. With the FCCLA, can you stay involved in that even after graduation? Like, is that at a college level? No, it's, it's just high school. I know, like, I, if you wanted to, I guess you could, like, work um like not compete or anything like that but you could definitely like work for fccla but not like a competitive like college type thing or anything like that no okay yeah i wasn't sure on that well um i was gonna ask about things you've done but it sounds like it's a ton of stuff so obviously yeah. you've been heavily involved and you've mentioned some of it so i mean since this all has started i mean the things that you've done you can barely list yeah it definitely it's a lot. It's a ton of community service stuff and it's a ton of just building up skills for your life and learning new things along the way and meeting new people. It's just an awesome experience. and I've loved being a part of it. Did you feel like when you started that like giving back to the community was something that you just felt like, oh, this is great and I could continue this? Yeah, it's definitely nice. Like, I, I don't know. It's just nice to be involved in your community in some way. I think it makes you feel good and then it also just helps like knowing that you're serving the community especially like when I did the food drive and stuff like that knowing how much people struggled during COVID was like super heartbreaking to me because it people lost their jobs and money and stuff like that so like I knew that the food drive was more important like this year than in past years so doing things like that and knowing that I'm able to help and like make a difference in that way is just it, it just feels great. Yeah it's very rewarding that's for sure. Definitely. Well we've we've talked about your sports <laughs> Tell me how many years you've been doing stuff and what you've been active in. So high school like level. So I've been in soccer and hockey since seventh grade, but I've played for long before that since elementary school. So I do that. And then I'm involved in some stuff and like at my church and stuff. And I'm involved in some other clubs. I actually joined Rocket Club this year, which is super fun with Mr. Kuyat. We get to like build our own rockets and he's one of my favorite teachers. So being able to be involved in that was fun. And I'm involved in Big Brothers, Big Sisters, Link Crew, and Minnesota Honor Society. So quite a bit, but it's all rewarding and super fun. Yeah. How do you have time for everything and then study? Because I know that you're <laughs> probably not taking the easiest classes either. Yeah, no, I I don't know. I just make time. If I have to stay up late to study for a test after like a hockey game or something like that, I just make the time to do it. I know how important it's going to be for my future and stuff like that. It's just making, especially now when it comes time to applying for scholarships in college, mm -hmm. it definitely is rewarding and it's helped me out being involved. So making the time, but also making time for myself along the way to not stress me out too much. 
Yeah, and hopefully you get uh, plenty of scholarships. And yeah, you know, well, about your future, I don't want to go there quite yet. But how about your family? I want to know about your mom, dad. You got siblings? Yeah. So my mom and dad are super awesome, and, <laughs> and then I have three siblings. I have an older sister, and then two younger brothers. Okay. So yeah. So wait, four, four total. You have one older, two, two younger. Yeah. All right. Well, have you? Did your older get you involved? I mean, where was, did you say sister? Yeah. Sister? Yeah. She was involved in a little bit in high school, but she did a lot more like work stuff. She was more oh. focused on that. And that's kind of what she was hoping for in her future as well. So she found ways to prepare herself. So I kind of, she guided me with that, like finding your interest and sticking to that. She definitely helped with that. Yeah. Are you trying to plug into the ear of the two younger to say, hey, do some of this stuff because yeah, you know, I definitely have. Yeah, so my um, I guess the older younger brother, he is a sophomore. So last year I got him involved in FCCL a little bit. It's not really his biggest interest. He's more into music, which I'm into. I'm in band and choir, but that's one of his big passions. And then the youngest one is a hockey kid, so that's really his main focus. It's hard to get anything else through his head, and he's a middle schooler too, so. <laughs> yes. He might come around. He might. Yeah, he might. But, well, you said special education teacher. That's mm -hmm. kind of that your your future goal. What is your plans for next year, college wise? So I'm looking into three schools currently. Winona, just because pricing is the cheapest and it's a good school for education. And then I'm also looking at Eau Claire, and then North Central University in the cities is my hopeful school that I'll go to. Okay, so you haven't picked anything quite yet. No. I've narrowed it down to my three. Excellent. Well, I'm so excited to to know. I was so excited to do this because I wanted to know more about FCCLA. And I know I talked to Brianna last year, and then Lizzie helped me with uh, the food drive. And oh, so yeah. I was so, so thankful for that, too. So you're a great kid. Congratulations on all this stuff that you're doing. Uh, good luck on your project and then good luck Thank on you. the hockey, uh, you know, on the rink too, because uh, you're back in action tomorrow night. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. You bet. That's Taylor Ludvigson. Then again, we'll have another interview coming up. Uh, unfortunately for scheduling wise, it's actually going to place, uh, take place tomorrow morning. And then tomorrow night we have boys basketball on channel two of KM activities when they host Triton. And we just mentioned it with the girls. They'll be right here on KM activities and they host Gentry Academy. It's a, another top five team that the girls are playing <laughs> that's rated. Uh, so that's what you can check out tomorrow uh, here on KM Activities. For Taylor, I'm Joel McCall. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thank you.